Historic building in Chemung County went up in flames tonight as crews fought not only the fire tonight, but the cold and the wind as well. This is what the Lindenwald house looked like around 9 o'clock tonight in the city of Elmira. The historic property is located on Grand Central Avenue, not too far away from Eldridge Park. As you can see in the video, flames were shooting out of the roof of that building, the Linden, the Lindenwald house and firefighters had their aerial ladder units deployed to try and get water down and into the roof and into the fire. And as you can see, the whole street, Grand Central Ave, was blocked off in front. Crowds gathered around the area as smoke rose into the sky. We even got reports that you can even see this from Interstate 86 as people were driving by. First responders, like I mentioned, they blocked off the immediate area. And as you may already know, the Lindenwald House was most recently operated as a boutique hotel and previously served as a bed and breakfast and a boarding house. Most recently in 2019, the property was sold. There's no word yet if it was occupied at the time of the fire tonight or if anybody was injured or what the extent of the damages. As of 1015 tonight, crews were still on scene. This is a developing story and we're going to keep you updated as more information becomes available. All right, turning to weather now, a few snow showers linger across the region, but warmer temperatures are being forecasted for tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Joe Varis is here to let us know how much of a warm up we can expect. Joe? Well, Nick, today we only topped out in the lower 20s for highs. We're going to push mid and upper 30s for tomorrow. It's still below average for this time of year, but a nice jump compared to where we were this afternoon. Also forecasting increasing amounts of sunshine. A uh, bit on the breezy side still for our Tuesday, but it looks like the snow showers will be winding down overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning. Still tracking some of those snow showers, mainly off towards the east of Elmira. A couple bands of these streamers coming off of uh, Seneca Lake here down through sections of Chemung County, including just to the east of Elmira, over towards the Baldwin area and down towards Lauman and Chemung, and then a little bit uh, farther off towards the east, more persistent snow showers, Tompkins County, and then down through sections of Tioga County in the southern tier, where some minor additional accumulations are likely overnight tonight. It's 18 in Bath, 19 in Tioga, 16 the current temperature in Erin, 21 right now in Tawanda. 19 in Elmira, a couple flurries being reported. Winds have been gusty, still sustained out of the west at 12 miles an hour, and it's feeling like 7 degrees. Occasionally, uh, the wind chill values dip below zero. Still on the breezy side for tomorrow, but we'll have more in the way of sunshine, especially going through the afternoon. Temperatures mid and upper 30s. Then tracking a warm front headed our way for Wednesday. That could bring a couple rain and snow showers our way, but once that warm front lifts through, much warmer temperatures will move in. I'll let you know how much of a warm up to expect coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Joe. Well, more than a month after Russia invaded Ukraine, the two nations are restarting peace talks aimed at a ultimate ceasefire. The meeting comes as President Biden defended what he said about Vladimir Putin not staying in power. Skylar Henry reports from Washington. Russia and Ukraine are slated to resume ceasefire talks on Tuesday. The sit down will take place over three days in Istanbul, Turkey. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says his country would consider a neutrality agreement to achieve peace. But the Kremlin says negotiations have yet to produce any breakthroughs. Ukrainian intelligence officials believe Moscow's new goal is to split their nation in two. Number one, I'm not walking anything back. President Biden, meanwhile, stood by a comment he made Saturday that Vladimir Putin, quote, cannot remain in power. I wasn't then, nor am I now, articulating a policy change. I was expressing the moral outrage that I feel, and I make no apologies for it. Mr. Biden believes nothing anyone says has much of an effect on the Russian leader. The president says Putin doesn't even listen to his own advisors. And in local news, April 1st, 2022 marks the 146th anniversary of the founding of the Elmire Police Department. And to honor the department's birthday, the police chief has designed a new departmental flag. That flag was voted on at tonight's city council meeting. Unanimously, all city council members adopted the flag, which will represent EPD and the pride and honor the department has serving the people of Elmira. Police Chief Anthony Alvarez says he is a big believer that every law enforcement agency should have their own flag. 
He says it's good for morale and also good for officers to have something to rally behind. From what I could find through looking through documents and you know historical type things, we couldn't find where the department actually had a standard. Uh, the law department couldn't find any resolutions in regards to it. So um, we thought uh, this would be a good year to implement it. And Chief Alvern has added that currently there is a vote taking place by officers in the department on multiple versions of the final flag. April 1st is when the new EPD flag that has been chosen will be unveiled and presented to both the officers and the public. Well, it is budget week in Albany. It is a busy week. Senate Assembly Republicans and law enforcement leaders, they gathered in the state's capital today to have their voices heard. Specifically, they're calling for Governor Hochul and legislators to fix bail reform. They say while they're not advocating for a complete change, they say there are some problems with the bail reform law that needs to be changed. Republican lawmakers want Hochul and legislative leaders to reverse what they say is failed criminal justice policies. Republicans also say too much time has passed and now is the time to strengthen public protection and restore safety in the 2022-2023 state budget. They need to be fixed now. The problems continue, they persist, they can't wait. That is why we're here today to ask that the Assembly, Senate and Governor consider these changes in, a, in an open conversation in the budget process. We can't stop talking about it because it's not going away. Because New Yorkers of all stripes, of all ethnicities, in all communities, they're talking about it. They're worried. Every day there's a new video, a new report, a new victim. At the same time, advocates representing a broad coalition of communities and lawmakers also gathered at the state capitol this morning to call on elected leaders to follow the evidence on reforms and to resist calls for rollbacks. The final state budget is due Friday, April 1st. And Pennsylvania's attorney general and the lone Democrat running for governor, Josh Shapiro, he outlined a plan to address the rising cost of everyday things. Shapiro's plan includes three approaches to cut down on expenses for Pennsylvanians. The first is to eliminate the Commonwealth's 11% sales tax on cell phones, which Shapiro says generates over $300 million in revenue each year, but is a burden for many families.